Well, many of us have heard or talked about politics at least a bit. We <laughs> certainly have uh, uh, more than a bit, uh, bit in the past few Tiny months. Bit. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, and whether it's politics, religion, money, uh, all the hot button stuff, some topics, of course, can very easily create some awkward, tense, combative moments over the Thanksgiving dinner table. Absolutely. So who better get advice uh, on how you can circumvent those heated discussions? A certified confidence coach, Karen Donaldson. Thank you so much, Karen, for joining us today. Happy Thanksgiving to you. So when wh what would you say are the top topics to avoid? I'm going to assume politics number one mm. but what else should we just kind of maybe just avoid altogether definitely really good question the first one yes is politics the next one is religion and the last one is people's personal lives mm. leave those three alone i call it prp oh okay but yeah. uh, the holidays is when all the aunties and the grandmas always ask you about your personal life like when you get married when you're having kids all that right yeah so how do you kind of when those topics do come up yeah. which they likely will <laughs> how do you remain cool calm and composed <laughs> Oh, absolutely. We know those questions will come up. If it's not personal, it's something you should or should not be doing. Hello. So here's what you have to do. The first thing you want to do is realize that you can't change how other people show up, but you change how you show up. And you have to set your personal boundaries. And you want to use I statements and say, say things like this. I don't want to talk about that today. Or today that's totally off the table. And the biggest thing to do just to make sure that everyone realizes that you're serious is you want to change your body and face them directly, make direct eye contact, and you'd say, Auntie, Auntie Mary, I'm not talking about that today. Maintain eye contact, then you go ahead and change the subject. Mm, I have an Auntie Mary, and she reliable. Mm, she, she go, <laughs> okay, can, can, I, can I keep it real real with you for a minute? I, I do love this talk. This is, this is real talk. Not TV yeah. talk. Okay. Number one, all of that is great advice. If people are sober, <laughs> which many of them are not going to be. So you can change the body and say, I'm not going to talk. Okay, that's, 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 when you six eggnogs deep or bottle of wine deep, that, those same rules don't apply. We all know that. So that's number one. Part two is, isn't part of the problem in the country right now that we don't talk it out, that we can't have these conversations anymore without people yelling or screaming or throwing a drumstick across the table. Can't, why can't we get into the real stuff at least a little bit? Because if we're not talking, we're not moving the ball down the field at all. It just seems counterproductive and, and juvenile to say, we ain't just gonna, we're not going to discuss it because it may get heated. Pick whatever part of that question, the floor is yours. <laughs> All right, so really good point. And here's reality. Conversations do need to be had, but when someone yells and the other person responds with yelling, there is no conversation. Mm -hmm. So if the first the initial person is yelling, or if you're the person yelling, know that the other person has shut down, so there is no conversation. However, if you want to have a conversation, you have to take responsibility of your own actions, which means you, if you want to enter the conversation, need to keep a calm tone. You, me, you, everyone here needs to not yell, right? So people can be heard. So the conversation can be had, but once yelling starts, everyone shuts down and essentially that just ruins the event. And so if it's going in that direction, you have to ask yourself, what am I going to take back control of? And it's usually the best thing to do is say, hey guys, this conversation is going nowhere. Let's go have dessert. Let's talk about something else. What are you grateful for? So it's having those things in your back pocket. But yes, to answer your question, conversations can be had, but not with two people yelling. This is okay. true. And not with everyone drinking. Right. Right? I agree. No, my, my, my pre-bourbon self agrees with all that. Right, right, right. I, I don't even want to know Rob post-bourbon. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. And another thing. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, so what, what happens then if you're trying to deploy these tactics, right, that you're talking about, but Uncle Eric, he just keeps on going. You don't want to walk away, right? Because you're like, hey, I want to enjoy this Thanksgiving meal and my family as well. How do you just extinguish that situation where they just will not let up? You're doing your best to be mature and cool and calm. Really good question. Like this comes back to personal boundaries. You don't want to stay in spaces that don't feel safe or don't feel healthy or you just don't like. Keep it simple. You just don't like. So although you said you don't want to get up and leave, that might need to be what you need to do. Or you need to say to Uncle Eric, Uncle Eric, this is not okay. And if you're going to continue, I'm going to leave.
right? Just take responsibility of yourself. You can't say you should leave. Anytime we turn around to you, all of a sudden the air gets negative and, and we're not taking responsibility for ourselves. So go back to you. Like, what are you going to do about it? What do you want to do about it? And vocalize that. Personal boundaries, let's set them, let's maintain them. Then everyone will get the hint. But when we don't and we, we stay quiet, then people continue to act like they usually act. Mm -hmm. So call people out when they need to be called out. And definitely get your to-go plate before you leave. If yeah, you do have yeah, yeah, Please get out that furl. <laughs> Wrap that plate with that furl. Yeah, yeah, so just maybe stack it up a, a plate or two. I'm going to stay home. I've learned, I, I've learned enough. I can't do it. I'm going to stay home. Get me a hungry man. <laughs> Frozen meal. Uh, me love. All right, Karen Donaldson, certified confidence <laughs> coach. Thank you so much for joining us today. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Thanks for all those tips.